So hi everyone. Um, so I went shopping this week. That's not an unusual thing actually, but uh, it's Sunday morning and I'm gonna go through one of my routine tasks uh, on a week where I actually did quite a bit of shopping. Um, if you're familiar with my videos, you have you know where I am right now. I'm down in what I call my inventory room and my shipping room. Um, and uh, I have set up all of the, oh, goodness, lots of, lots of light. I've set up all of the, um, the boxes uh, from the different um, shopping adventures that I had last week over here uh, in my my processing room, I guess I'll call it, um, because I do like to unpack things. I like to get them sorted. I like to get them priced. And quite a few things that I bought this week are going to be up for resale this upcoming week. So by the time you see this video, some of the items that you'll see today have already been sold. But I know some people enjoy watching uh, us go through the things that we bought and our decision-making process. So I thought I'd bring you along. Let me show you what I got. Okay, so just looking through the other side of the staircase, you can see on the tables, I have what I brought home from, and th these are exclusively antique and vintage shops. These are not thrift stores. I do that in a different way. Um, so these are all purchases from this week uh, from both stores in New Jersey and in New York. I spent a couple days out um, shopping and this is the result, probably seven or eight different stores. Uh, one of them is brand new to me and I'm going to start with that one. So I'm going to get set up and I will be right back with the first box. Okay, I'm all set up. I have box number one next to me. And again, I said I went to multiple stores this week. I'm going to start with box number one because this is a store that I've been to for the first time. Um, and I'm going to link all of the um, contact information for all the stores that I went to uh, this past week down in down in the comments in case you wanted to check them out online. Uh, many of them I've filled at, filmed at before, not all of them. Um, and this first one is actually uh, a place that I've been trying to get to for a long time. I've learned about them on Instagram. Uh, it's uh, a store in Long Island, Huntington Beach, Long Island, I think Huntington Be Beach, um, called Rosie's Vintage Shop or Rosie's Vintage Store. Definitely worth the follow if you like kitsch, if you like mid-century glass. There's an amazing room of mid-century glass, but a lot of kitsch. Um, and so I needed, I needed to check it out. Here's what happened. Um, Again, I don't want to get into a big long story, but this was a drive for me. This was about two hours away from home, even though it's not that far in terms of mileage. You have to get across New York City from one side to the other. I, for many of you know, um, in addition to gardening and vintage collecting and vintage reselling sometimes, I also have a full-time job. I'm a college professor, and I recently uh, moved to a new university where I'm teaching a class for the first time. Information I understand, but I, in order to get all the lectures and the, all of the material together, I need thinking time. And for me, thinking time is best done while I'm driving. Uh, it just lets me th forget about everything else. And in my head, I can start constructing uh, the order of the information that I want to present to students, or I, I really call it the story. I try to come up with a story for every time I get together with my students. So, um, so I decided uh, a couple days ago to take a long drive. And it seems silly to take a drive without a destination. So I was trying to think of where should I go? And I decided that I would go to a place I hadn't gone before. And while Rosie's Vintage Shop is two hours away from my house, I was wondering if that should be my destination because I've been trying to go there for so long. And uh, a few weeks ago, I recently saw a picture that they posted on Instagram, obviously with some things that I wanted to check out. But then I decided it was too far and I should go somewhere else. Before I left home, I opened up Instagram just to check my messages. And would you believe that the very first post that I saw on my Instagram feed was from Rosie's Vintage Store? So I took it as a sign and I had out I headed out to Long Island. Not only did I get some great vintage that day, but I got all my thinking done. I finished it all in one trip. So it was a great day, and I stopped at some other places on the way back, of which I'll show you now. But let me start with Rosie's. Here are some things I got. I filled up a box at this place. Again, they had a lot of stuff. I probably could have gone crazy here, but um, I stuck to I stuck to what I was looking for, really, which was, was kitsch. 
and um, I got some great things. If you saw my Instagram post, you may have seen this first little planter. This is, um, what's it called, Grant Craft? Yeah, a Grant Craft Japan little puppy planter, and look at all the sugaring on the top of the bonnet. I think it's super cute, and it's in really good condition. Um, and while I don't collect dogs, I do collect planters, I know I'm gonna be able to find a good home for this. If you've heard me say this before, it's a flat black planter. Those are always the great ones to have because you can put them in places that round planters don't fit so much. But I was really looking for holiday, you all know that, and I found a double of one that I already have. I have this little lady, she's a Rubens planter, and while she's not necessarily screaming Valentine's Day, she's perfect for Valentine's Day. She's got a cute little petticoat, um, with all the tool underneath. She has most of her Ruben sticker, but she does have her Ruben stamp on the bottom, and she's in phenomenal condition. This particular planter, because I've had it a few times, um, is prone to having breaks at the neck and these big bows that are here at the back. Also, flat back planter. Look out for those flat back planters. They're super, super useful if you live in a small place like I do. Um, let's see, I did get another planter. I got a couple more actually. I got this awesome, I can't remember the manufacturer of this puppy. Um, this is actually a wall pocket. Um, so you see the holes back here. And I've had the salt and pepper shakers that go in this set and I think there are other pieces as well. But I think this one is super cute and I'm looking past the cold paint loss on the bow because it's that cute. Again, it's a wall pocket so it has a flat back. But this is super cute and it's big. So I got this at Rosie's as well. And I got one more planter. May as well just show all the planters first. Uh, I don't know when this video is gonna come out, likely later in February or in March, I don't know. But um, it's not Valentine's Day yet and I can't pass up a good holiday planter, particularly when they're so well done. The cold paint on this is amazing. As you can see, it is a planter. It needs to be cleaned out a little bit. But the lace work is what is really impressive to me. This is all three dimensional and it's all in good condition. Um, this is a Teleflora made in Taiwan planter. So these sorts of planters were made in the 70s and the early 80s specifically for the floral industry. Um, this is the kind of planter that someone would have got at their house when someone ordered Valentine's flowers for them. So super sweet and again in great condition, no chips or cracks. That's likely gonna stay with me. Not entirely sure, but I think so. And while this is not a planter, it's within the realm of planters because uh, another thing that I do, some of you know, is I collect pottery. And while I have a couple pottery companies that I collect, one of my faves is McCoy. And I don't have this particular planter in this color. Actually, it's a vase, not a planter. It's got a beautiful McCoy um, uh, a stamp on the bottom and it was the right price. McCoy has not been easy to buy lately in terms of price and this one was very well priced for me. And other than I think there was one, one issue down at, no, no, there's crazing but no chips or cracks. So that's gonna stay with me. Love this particular blue that McCoy does. I also found, I always pick up cute little um, recipe boxes, the old recipe boxes when I find them. This one has a few recipes in it. Um, and I know like people love, um, love uh, buying recipe boxes that have recipes in them. And I'm fortunate enough to have um, gotten a lot of recipes without boxes um, at an estate sale quite a few years ago. So I always load these up with some recipes as a little bonus for people. But this one has a beautiful little daisy pattern and it is a Jay Shen. Um, couple big uh, uh, metal companies that made recipe boxes in Shen. C-H-E-I-N is one of them. And I think they were from Ohio. Oh, it doesn't say. But USA, USA company. I love that. And again, working on my, um, on my holiday displays, let me start with uh, 4th of July because I found some things I'd never seen before. Um, these are Regent Baby Products, 1975, made in Korea Squeaks. This little guy and this little pink lady, I love them. They are going to fit really well in my 4th of July cabinet. Um, I don't go all out for 4th of July, but I do have one shelf in my cabinet for 4th of July. I actually think I got another thing somewhere today, 4th of July, um, but this is going to go into my collection. I love them. I've also been picking up a lot of milk glass mugs lately because I think some colors fit well into holiday displays. And I got this really great checkerboard His mug. Um, I wanna say that the company starts with a W West, maybe it's Westfield glass, um, but it's a great little mug in great condition. Um, I see these a lot because these you could have gotten personalized with your name on it or a loved one's name or something else that says a different word. Um, but, uh, 
usually that personalization gets rubbed off pretty easily, and this one is in really good condition. Yeah, I've been kind of going crazy with the milk glass mugs lately. I got a few Valentine's things too. Um, I got two of these really beautiful, impressive shadow boxes that I think were probably made somewhere in the mid-century, but they contain, uh, I really can't get a good view of it, they contain those pop-up Victorian uh, Valentine calling cards, the ones that are three-dimensional. So essentially this Victorian calling card, Valentine's Day card, has been preserved inside this really neatly constructed um, box. So this one features a little boy, and a boy and a girl, um, sort of kissing in the garden. And I have one other one, um, which features a little boy, or a teenage boy, holding um, a uh, bunch of roses sitting on a rock, probably waiting for someone to come by to give them to. So I think those are super cool. And the last thing you may have seen if you follow me on Instagram, I found some vintage Valentines from 1978, which I think are really cool. They are McDonald's Valentine's Day cards, with Ronald, one with Ronald McDonald, one with Mayor Big Mac, one with um, the Hamburglar, one with Captain Crook, the guy who always was stealing the filet of fish, and then one with, oh, oh no, this is Mayor Big Mac, that was Officer... Officer Cheeseburger, I don't know, Officer something, I can't remember. Um, but the cool thing about it is, um, these were, there's probably, there was pro I know actually there was a sixth one, there was a sixth one that was Grimace, that one's missing, but the Ronald McDonald one has a free fry coupon on the back, which I think is pretty cool. It expired in 1978, but it's still pretty cool. So those were the things I found at Rosie's Vintage Shop in Long Island, Huntington, Huntington Beach, Long Island. I'm gonna pack this box up and get my second box so I can show you what else I got at some other stores. Okay, and just like that, I am back. I'm back with my second box. Uh, another, I love reusing these priority boxes because a lot of people send me items in these boxes and I reuse them to store things in, but I also reuse them to send things again, like reusing the things. So I don't know what order the stores are in at this point. It'll probably be a mix between New York and New Jersey stores. I'm gonna to need to remind myself, oh, so this next store is a special one. I haven't filmed here yet, but I've recently met the owners and I'm super excited to maybe explore the potential to film at some point here because they have great stuff. They have three huge locations. The one that I'm um, going to show you today, actually I've been going to for about 25 years. Uh, it's in an area in the Hudson Valley of New York where I used to live. I used to live in a town called Hyde Park where the Franklin Delano Roosevelt and Vanderbilt mansions are. And um, this is called the Hyde Park Antique Center, a beautiful antique, large multi-vendor in a historic building in the center of town. If you are in the Hudson Valley, Hyde, Hyde, Hyde Park is a place to visit. I lived there for quite a while. And this place is, this antique store 20 years ago was in its heyday. And it's in its heyday again because the, the new owners have really transformed it. And it's an amazing place. Any style of antique or vintage that you like, you will find at the Hyde Park Antique Center. I will link it below. But here's what I picked up here. And again, I'd only been here a few weeks before. So it's not the largest haul of, um, of items, but... I, all of these things are things I really loved. And I've been looking for these Federal, I believe they are. Yep, the Federal Sunflower Mugs for quite a while. Um, I'm, I kind of have in my head now that I'm gonna be a milk glass mug collector of flowers, because I'm, you know, like gardens. So I got two of them for a great price. And I love the way these Federal ones, they're big. They're bigger than a lot of other milk glass mugs and they stack really nicely. What else did I get? I got some Easter cuties. I got three of these. I've never seen these before. These little flocked Easter bunnies with the red eyes and they're each holding a little carrot. I think it's so cute. Uh, they are made in Japan. They have a made in Japan sticker on the bottom. They're fully flocked with a bit of fur on the back. I'm not sure the nature of the fur, but it's there. They even have whiskers. Let me give you a close up. If you can see the whiskers. Oh, let me get... So, so cute. Yeah, I got three of those. I thought these were a real find because um, I hadn't seen them before. Probably mine, sorry. Um, although maybe I don't need three. Maybe I can share one or two of them. I also, even though I'm kind of done with my New Year's display, I never really stopped looking. And I picked up this postcard because I really like the use of pink in it. 
this January 1st New Year, uh, Happy New Year's postcard. Um, I just really like this mix of red and pink with the gold. I think it just looks really super cool. So I decided I needed this one. It was never sent, so I don't know the age. Um, so it's, it's a new one uh, in terms of it's never been used, but I don't know how old it is. Uh, it would have cost one cent to send. And if you were sending it to a foreign country, it would have cost two cents. So that might help me age it um, when I do some research. Or maybe one of you will be kind enough, if you know, to put it down in the comments if you know how old this postcard is based on how much it costs to send, which was one penny. I also am always thinking Halloween and kitschy Halloween because it's so hard to find. And I found one of these Pepsi glasses. I remember these as a kid. I picked this one up because it's in super good condition. Um, this is the hot stuff glass where um, this guy walked through a fence. He was so hot, he was able to burn his way through the fence. Great condition. A lot of other, like, what was it? Log, longhorn, bighorn, bighorn, loghorn. Anyway, that big chicken was in this series and Yogi Bear and those sorts of uh, Roadrunner, those sorts of characters. And then again, from Hyde Park Antique Center, I found not one, but two really beautiful hand-painted and fritzed Fenton, um, Fenton slippers. And I tend not to pick these up uh, unless there's something special about them or unless they're a great price. And in this case, both of those things were the case. These are, these are 95th anniversary Fenton pieces, I think. Um, they have that uh, silver stamp on the bottom, at least this one does. It is hand signed because it was painted and it has this beautiful floral with the fritz on the front of it. And I thought for St. Patrick's Day, if someone was looking for something that had St. Patrick's vibes, there's a flower pattern on it, that this might be a really nice option. I picked up a second one, and this one is in purple and daisy and button, so that makes it special right there. But it is also hand painted, and the heel is glittered. Can you see that? That's new to me, I hadn't seen that before. This one is also signed uh, by the artist with a Fenton stamp on the bottom, and this one has its 95th anniversary sticker. Um, the 95th anniversary was in the 1990s. I don't remember exactly which year, um, but it has the, the sticker there. So those are my finds from the Hyde Park Antique Center. Super excited to get that stuff. And I'm gonna move on to the next store. All right, now here's a place uh, that is about to come out in a video series that I have. I made three videos at this place, and while you've not seen me film there before, um, you're about to see a super, super store. It's called Valley Vintage in West Orange, New Jersey, and it's kind of paradise. It's really great. I mean, I kind of paint every place I go to is amazing, but all three places I've already talked about today are amazing. So I go to Valley Vintage because it's now seven minutes away from my new job. I pretty much go there several times a week. So I've bought quite a few things there over the last few weeks. I didn't buy a ton. Um, this day I was actually here, I, I went to Valley Vintage to pick something up that a friend had bought. But I did find a few things, and with St. Patrick's Day coming up, I grabbed this little leprechaun guy because you know me, anything that looks like a pixie, I need. So I got him, I don't know, I don't know where he's gonna live, if he's gonna be in my house or somebody else's house. And I picked up a couple of milk glass mugs. I found this one. I really love that color from the mid-century. Um, this is a uh, undisclosed manufacturer. Don't know who it was, but I think it's super cool. I like the shape too. Don't know what I'm gonna do with it. I don't know why I'm buying all these milk glass mugs, but I seem to be doing it. And I found another one of those checkerboard mugs. Again, this one has his written on it. I really like these. Um, I have to remember who made these. Um, but those are the three things that I got at Valley Vintage this week. Again, they'll be linked below, but believe me, I got a lot of other stuff at this place over the last few weeks. All right, let's see what the, okay, the last place is a place I haven't filmed yet. Um, this is up in New Paltz, New York, in the Hudson Valley, on the west side of the Hudson River, and it is called Antiques at Water Street. Um, it's sort of like, a market that is multiple shops. Um, and this is the big antique barn within that complex. And I go here quite frequently. I don't wanna lose this. I go here quite frequently and um, uh, sometimes fill a car full and sometimes just get a few things. Um, there was a holiday sale in one of the booths. Everything was 50% off. So I grabbed a bunch of, I grabbed a bunch of Christmas. I mean, I think I got these for 50 cents or a dollar. I got two of those uh, glittered mica um, bird ornaments. And um, these ones do have uh, their 
Made in Japan sticker on them. Actually, it has the company and the year. I've never seen that before. The company is Frankel Industries, and the year is 1956. Never seen a sticker like that on them before. But I got a blue one, and of course, because they are the perfect mid-century colors, I also got a pink one. Um, I love these guys. I have a bunch in my own collection. We'll find some good homes for them. I got this little lady too, because this is the one that was 50 cents. Made in Japan, she has a tag right on her hanger. I just can't say no to these mid-century felt spun head ornaments, no matter what they look like. She's got a cute little poinsettia on her, um, and she's a nice size. So um, a lot of times they were ornaments and package toppers, so they had double duty, and I think that one probably was. Now here's something I don't have in my pixie collection, which is quite interesting. This guy in the rocking chair, and the rocking chair actually rocks. So he's gonna go upstairs with all of his friends in the pixie cabinet, which I just realized I still have to show everyone because I finally have it done. And then the last thing I got at, um, at the antique store at the Market Street Center, or Market Street Market, Water Street Market, is this planter, because I love that it's an elephant with a little, a little um, uh, 4th of July hat and it's in really good condition, and it's also a Rubens planter. So Rubens have, make really great planters, and so this one's gonna look really nice in my collection as well. So that was um, the anti, oh, one more thing. Almost forgot, and this is actually the thing that started the whole shopping trip that day. Um, I got another Christmas ornament. I got one of those awesome snow people. This one's sitting on a log with a little mushy next to it, made in Japan uh, stamp. Um, I know how much people love these, so I'm not gonna hoard them all. I do have a few myself. So this one will be for sale at, at an um, upcoming sale because um, you know it's not right for, I believe it's not right for me to have like 20 of them. So I can share, I can keep 15 of them and share the rest, 15. All right, so that's the end of box number two. I'm gonna go grab box number three and I will be right back. Okay, I know it was only a few seconds for you, but it was a few minutes for me, but I'm back with box number three. And with box number three, I think it's a couple different stores. The first store is Small Town Antiques. They were the subject of a video a few uh, days ago. Um, and it was a super popular video. If you haven't seen it, you should check it out um, because it is, it's just an amazing place. Um, if you did see it, you might remember it as the place that had the big plant stand outdoors that I was really looking at and hoping to uh, hoping to purchase. I never followed up with everybody about it. Um, if you remember that video, you remember I was gonna go inside and negotiate for that plant stand, but when I did go inside, I found out that it was already sold. So, um, so that was a disappointment. But I went back a couple days ago. This is Small Town Antiques in Flanders, New Jersey. And you may have seen this already. I picked up this crate. Whenever I can find affordable crates that are divided, I like to pick them up because they're perfect for displaying, particularly all the ceramics that I have, because I have so many. Um, and it just gives me a, another way to display them. And I love the old soda, um, the old soda advertising. So I have some Coke, I have some 7-Up, and this is actually my first Pepsi. Uh, interestingly enough, I picked up another milk glass mug. I got a McDonald's mug. I don't know why I got it, because I already have a bunch of these. I bought a box of them once from an estate, but Quite frankly, it was the right price. These are made by Fire King, Anchor Hawking. Um, so, um, so I got it. Plus I've been thinking about doing a little McDonald's display. You saw those McDonald's um, Valentine's cards that I found earlier. And then the last thing that I brought, which probably will come to a sale this week, is this really cool guy. He's not a clown, don't worry. He is sort of this guy standing outside of a bar. He's got his little bottle, whatever it is. He's leaning on a lamppost. And as you can see, he has this bright, bright red nose that says bar. And he is a working light, which I think is super fantastic. Made in Japan, it is redware. Um, I just think he's great. Um, so the little um, uh, panels on the light have some sayings. One says, welcome, what's your pleasure? The other one says, Carol and Bill's place. Must be the name of, of the place, or maybe Carol and Bill owned this at some point. Has a blue Japan stamp on the bottom. I think that's pretty fantastic. So um, again, I go to this place weekly, so I don't ever get tons because I just saw the stuff the week before, but those are the three things that I picked up this week. Um, and the next shop is another one that I go to frequently. In fact, they're sort of um, right down the road from one another. This is a box of stuff that I got at Gray Barn Antiques. 
Now, Grey Barn was also the subject of one of the videos that I posted right before Christmas. And this place is great because for almost all the booths, they're always 20% off. And many of them, some months, have even better, um, better deals. Like, I have some stuff on the floor that I bought from them. This booth owner through January has 30% off everything. And I actually found this amazing jardinier stand. Now I don't have a yellow that matches it exactly, but I do have one from the same company that is green and yellow. And I think it will look really great. And as you can see, it's pretty big. How gorgeous is this? These always get banged up and chipped and cracked, but this one's in really good condition. It was 30% off. And um, yeah, I'm going to be able to use this in, in my, my collection of them. Um, that's probably another video I should do at some point, maybe in the spring when I have everything set out on the deck. I can show you all the McCoy and uh, Roseville Jardiniers I have. In fact, this one, let me get it one more time to show you, was actually made in Roseville, but it is not Roseville pottery. Uh, Roseville, Ohio, um, Roseville, Roseville, the company named themselves after the town they were in, Roseville, Ohio, but Roseville wasn't the only company in Roseville. This is actually a company called Robinson Ransbottom, RRR Co., um, but it always says Roseville on the bottom too, so it confuses people and it makes them think that the Robinson Ransfield pottery is Roseville, and it's not. It was just made in Roseville. And interestingly enough, Robinson Ransbottom stayed in Roseville, and at some point, um, Roseville pottery moved to Zanesville, Ohio, and didn't even stay in Roseville, which I think is really funny and kind of nerdy, right? But I like that kind of stuff. Now, another thing that I got was... This awesome, y'all know I love my wall art, or maybe you don't know, but I do. This awesome cruel. Now the back is not dated, um, and I think it's been reframed. This looks a little bit more country chic contemporary, but it is a great cruel, especially if you're someone who loves florals and you switch out your cruels for the season. This one would be a really great summer and autumn cruel because to me this looks like um, these are either nasturtium or poppies. Really pretty. So that will be coming for a sale only because I have no more wall space in my house to hang anything. All right, and I did get some little stuff. Um, uh, St. Patrick's Day is coming up and I already have this little Goble boy in my collection from 1963, but I think he's super cute. The little redhead with the checkered shirt crawling along the grass to pick that four leaf clover. He's in great condition. Um, and this boy is a, in a little series of boys and girls kind of wearing similar outfits um, with red hair that Goble made. Um, these St. Patrick's Day things are really, really collectible. So I will hopefully find a home for him because again, I have that one already. Now I also love picking up glass animals when I know that they're vintage, like this amber pig. Pigs are unusual, pigs are collectible, but um, it does have its Pilgrim Glass Company stamp on it which is pretty amazing. And it's in great condition, including this sort of turn corkscrew um, tail that the pig has. He's super cute, super cute. Um, what else did I get? Oh, I've become a big fan of Westmoreland glass in the last month or so, just because I found some really good pieces. And this one is uh, kind of up there. I really love it. I love the color. Um, uh, I have to look it up a little bit more, but the booth owner called it caramel. I don't know if that's what Westmoreland calls it, but it's this little sort of covered apothecary candy dish. And it has a beautiful painting on the front, hand painting on the front. And it still has its Westmoreland sticker on the top. I love this. Not sure exactly what I'm going to do with it because I do have a place in my home for it because I was thinking about it, but I'm not sure. I'm not sure I want to start collecting another glass company because I don't really... I don't think I have a single piece of Westmoreland in my collection, but I really think that's pretty. I found another milk glass mug. <laughs> I don't know why. Uh, it was the right price and it's a radio station somewhere that I had need to look up. I don't know where it is, but I thought it was really cool. That it was in really good condition in terms of the, of the paint. So I decided to grab it. I found a couple kitschy, really cute uh, sets of salt and pepper shakers. I've seen these before, and I think I'm supposed to know who they are, but they're not marked on the bottom, so I have to look them up. They are little salt and pepper telephones. Anthropomorphic telephones, because they have legs. I think they're legs. Yeah, they're legs, because those are shoes. How cute are they? 
the old style rotary telephones. I wonder if you ask like a two or three year old today what this is, if they would even know what it is. That would be a fun little experiment to do, wouldn't it? All right, as you get one more pair of, of salt and pepper shakers, and these are for me, for my collection, um, cause I, I don't own them, believe it or not, and th there's a little bit of damage, so I'm gonna keep them, but I did want a pair. I've had them before, I've owned them before and sold them. I have the um, Holt Howard Poinsettia Girl salt and pepper shakers, and as you can see, a little pedal part of the pedal on the salt is missing, but I don't care, because they're gonna go into my cabinet. They have Holt Howard stamps and uh, stoppers on the bottom, um, and I think they're super cute. If you've never seen these, these are one of the classic Christmas Holt Howard sets of salt and pepper shakers. Really adorable, really collectible. They face opposite ways and the center of their flowers have S and P written on them. So these are gonna go next to my Daisy Dorable Girls. And if you don't know who they are, Google it. Cause I don't think I can take a picture right now. <laughs> anyway, that was the end of box number three. One more box, everyone. Thanks for sticking with me. I will be right back. I will be right back. I will be right back. I'm back, just like I promised, three times. So this is the biggest box of all of them, and I think there are three or four stores represented in this box. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna move swiftly through them, but I do think there's some pretty great stuff in here to look at, and quite frankly, some things I probably don't remember. It's a big box. So, okay, so this first store, um, is a, another store I only went to. This was the first time I ever went. It's called Carnival of Collectibles. And it is in South Jersey. And the name of the town is escaping me right now, but I will post it below. Is it Sayerville? Anyway, I will post it below, but it's Carnival of Collectibles. If you're in that area, this place has got some really interesting things to look at. And many of you may have seen this if you follow me on Instagram already, but one of the things I got was this amazing vinyl elephant. I can't say enough about it. It's so cute. And it's actually already sold. Um, I sold this last night. So, um, but it's really cute. I knew I could find a home for it. It was sitting on a top shelf. It just looked lonely and forlorn. So I decided to get it because I think it's really spectacular. And a good uh, spring color, especially like if you do Easter um, decorating, that's a really great color scheme, I think. I also found some old stock um, Christmas ornaments, and I think they were meant to be package stoppers. I found multiples of these. I think I found six or eight of these umbrellas, and I'm pretty sure they were meant to be package toppers that you would then convert into Christmas ornaments. Someone did put a hook on the end of this. But there are these awesome green umbrellas with a lot of rickrack on them and a little rose up at the top on the handle. I think they're super cool. So I found a bunch of those, and I also found a bunch of these really mid-century looking, and I believe these are package toppers that are meant to turn into ornaments as well. They have a little mirror in the, in the, um, in the base, not a real mirror, a reflective, reflective surface, but if you can look, uh, with the red, there's a pink, um, pink and gold detail around, which I think is really neat, and these are big. These would be really great to get as a package topper. I think I found 10 of those. So I grabbed those at Carnival of Collectibles. I'm also a sucker for a really good box. I don't know what this, this box isn't, uh, it's not marked for anything. Maybe it was a card box, maybe it was a tie box, I don't know, or a glove box, but it's got a great um, image of Santa with some holly and berries on it. Um, so I grabbed that because I'm always looking for things to stack things on. Oh, I found these. Have you guys ever seen these before? These are new old stock made by Santa's World Christmas matches, but the covers are those, oh, what do you call it? When you move something to the side and it looks like it moves, it's that, whatever it's called. Um, and these were made uh, by Santa's World for Kurt Adler. That's what it says on the back. But it's these four little images uh, with, with matches on the inside and they're, it's, it's an unopened package. Um, so that's pretty cool. And the last thing that I got, actually I got other things here. I just, they're probably somewhere else. I, I separated the Christmas from the rest, was this awesome red-faced Santa vinyl door cover. That's what it looks like when it's on your door. But it's new old stock, I love it. I even love the colors they use on up, up here. This is a Yuletide product, one of our favorite mid-century, older um, holiday companies. So I got that at Carnival of Collectibles. I did get some other things. In, in fact, I know I got a plant stand slash telephone stand, which is in my shed 
because um, I'm going to bring it to the store. But I did I did get quite a few nice things there. Oh, I got a bunch of skunks, um, which I already unpacked because I brought them to a sale already. A bunch of different skunk salt and pepper shakers and probably some other things that I can't remember. All right, moving along, let's see. Oh, I took a trip to a store I'd only been to a week before up in the Hudson Valley because I was there anyway. This is a tiny store packed full of really good things. In fact, this is another store I've been going to for 20 years or more. Um, they've moved locations, but, um, but it's always been good. And there are some vendors there that are particularly uh, well suited to my tastes. Um, and uh, on this particular trip, I only found two things, but both things that I found are pretty incredible. Um, these uh, should look familiar to you because they're probably, maybe not the most common Holt Howard thing that we see, but they're up there. Um, I got a very good and um, uh, very good condition set of Cozy Kitten salt and pepper shakers. They do have their noisemakers in the bottom, but they do not make noise anymore. But they're super cute, and unlike so many of the sets I've owned in the past, there are no chips on their ears. They're in really good condition. Look at that side eye. Classic piece of Holt Howard Kitsch. I love them. So I got those at the Annex Antique Center, and then I also got this. Um, and I'm not sure, I may make this a subject of a video at some point. This is a catalog of toys from Rifle, Colorado, uh, from a store called The Golden Rule Store. Rifle, Colorado. This is a catalog of toys. Now, it's not dated, but all of the photo, all of the um, images are, are drawn so in, in the catalog. So I think that gives us an indication of the age. And it looks like a, many of the um, toys are not ones that would be mass manufactured, but smaller runs. So again, I'm gonna try to see if I can find the date. I mean, the prices on the back for some of the games, 10 cents, 59 cents, 29 cents. Here are some dolls, um, tea sets, some outdoor toys. Yeah, so I don't know what year this is. I don't know if anyone's from that area of Colorado and might know, um, but it's just a fun thing to look through, an old catalog just with one condition issue here. It had a little bit of tear on the cover, but I really loved it and I liked looking through it. So that was fun. That's what I got at Annex because again, I had just been there the week before. Okay, so here's another, um, I made a couple of videos at this place because it's local to me. It's only about 20 minutes from my home. This is a, a group of items I got at Then and Now Antiques in Hawthorne, New Jersey. Um, and this is actually the reason I needed to do the unboxing today because there are two pieces in here that I want to bring to a sale tomorrow. So let me show you what I got at Then and Now. Um, the first thing I got, again, because it is right before Valentine's Day, is this little sweetie, this little kitty holding a heart. She's not focusing really well. Yeah, she's cute. Um, she's got a hollow base, but it doesn't look like she was meant to be a bell. Um, and she doesn't have a manufacturer. So I'll look her up and see what she's all about. Um, I got this beautiful piece of pink milk glass. Um, I need to look it up. It's probably Jeanette, but I need to look it up because it doesn't have a mark. But because it doesn't have a mark, it leads me even more to believe that it's Jeanette. Because uh, if it were Westmoreland, it would probably have a mark. But it's really beautiful, this little console bowl planter with all this detail and it is in the pink and if it is a Jeanette piece it's called shell pink so I'll look that up oh my goodness oh my goodness look what I found and quite frankly if you, I'm probably gonna have people who say they contact me because they want these but I think I'm keeping them I never had this color before I have blue lucite candles with silver speck in them and if you look up here, not only are the wicks fully intact, it doesn't look like they've ever been rotated up from their original packaging. And they are the large ones. These are probably 11 to 12 inches long, depending on the base. Now, they don't have any stoppers on the bottom. They do have their original, um, their original gold foil that says do not burn, which is a classic of Lucite candles. The clarity is amazing. They're beautiful. Um, I've never had blue before, so I'm pretty excited about that. So I think I can use that in multiple different holidays over the, over the year. Um, but now I have red, clear, and blue. And I think you know what I'm thinking, red, clear, and blue. Found another milk glass mug, everyone, but I found the apple. Um, and again, these are Fire King as well. 
Anchor Hawking Fire King. Um, they come in four different fruits, and I, I think I have at least one of all of them, but that was a great price. I didn't want to pass it up. I also didn't want to pass up the opportunity to get this little set still in its styrofoam. The top is taped on the bottom, but it's this little set of floral, floral um, china place card holders. I think they're so pretty, and based on what I've seen, you know, in the sales online before, there are people who really do like these and want them because there are other things you can do with them. You can display things in them. They can be business card holders. You can put little Valentine's or Christmas cards in them for display. Those are super good. I found a Wade Whimsy, everyone, but one of the larger ones from the Fairy Tale series. I am trying to finish the entire, and again, if you're familiar with Wade's, they're typically this big. These are um, the large scale fairy tale series. There is a small scale, and this is uh, this is Peter Peter Pumpkin Eater. He is one I do not have in the collection, so I'm getting close. I think I may only need two or three more after this one, so that's going to be fun. I love having full collections. Um, I picked up a couple books, uh, not uncharacteristic of me, but. Um, these are both late 1800s books, and I picked them up both for the same reason, because they're kind of, I need to read a little bit of them to see if they're as creepy as I think they might be. This one is called Only Girls, and the reason I bought it, it's in great condition, but the reason I bought it is because I read the first sentence of the book. So this is 1872, and here is the first sentence of the book, if you're interested. The devil had entered into Keith Bartlett's soul that day. I gotta know what's going on in this book called Only Girls. The devil entered their soul. And then the second book, again, I don't know the subject of the book, but the title is intriguing to me, The Witch of Prague. So my sister and niece live in Prague in the Czech Republic, so that's interesting to me. But also I want to know what this witch thing is all about. And this is also an old book, 1891 it was published. And even if I keep them, they're both in green tones, and that's how I like to display my books in greens and golds. So they're great books, but you know maybe they're special enough for me to see if I can find someone who really wants them to read. Um, so I, I'll think about that. And then the very last thing of this whole haul, everyone, uh, is some Halloween. Uh, this uh, place, um, uh, then and now consignments, uh, always has, seems to have some good Halloween waiting for me. And today, these weren't even out on the, um, or the day I went, they weren't even out on the floor yet. I got three vintage in package by Reed. These are Reed 1979 um, paper tablecloths, all the same design. This pumpkin with a little black cat peeking out around the corner. Yeah, so that's what I got. And I know this is going to be a long video, so my apologies, but I know some of you want to stick around and see all this stuff. Others of you might just fast forward through, but um, the point is I needed to do this anyway, so I went ahead and filmed it. So I am going to end it now because that's everything I got this week. Yes, everyone, this was just one week of shopping. Maybe not completely a typical week, but if I'm being honest, it's kind of a typical week. And this is only the antique stores and vintage stores. This doesn't include my shopping at thrift stores. So, yeah shopping. Yeah. Anyway, thanks for hanging out, everybody. Thanks for subscribing to my channel. I really appreciate you all. I love the comments that you leave me. It's just so nice. Like, I'm, it's just such a nice thing to have in life. Um, and if you're not subscribed, consider subscribing. This is the kind of stuff I do. Every little subscription helps a little guy like me. Well, I'm not so little, actually. I've got to work on that. But you know what I mean, a little business guy like me. Um, and uh, if you don't want to subscribe, maybe just give me a like, leave me a comment, answer one of my questions of things I didn't know, or just hit your notifications so you can see when my next video comes out. I've been trying to do one every four days lately, so hopefully I can continue that pace. But until the next video, I will leave you with that, everyone. Um, thanks for hanging out with me, and have a great day. Bye.